Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. The Word of God will come to dispose you. The Word of God will come to equip you. The Word of God will come to fire you and power you into the place of your glory. Hallelujah. The Word of God will bring you healing, will bring you deliverance. The Word of God will bring you revelation that will change your pattern. The Word of God will do everything God has in mind. For it is written, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is God's power. To bring salvation, to bring deliverance, to bring change. When God wants to change a nation, He sends a word, a word man. When God wants to change a family, He sends the word and the word man or the word woman. We're going to talk about solution. But to talk about solution, we will do further analysis of the problem. Today, so much information coming at you. I hope you'll be able to document, to write. I hope also you bless yourself with these teachings. You can get them into your memory card. You can get them into soft copy into your computer. You can come with flash. You can buy CDs. <laughs> but revelations like this, you have them and you share them. The greatest thing you can do for an individual may just be giving somebody the word more than ever this is a time of the word so pay attention to what we're going to share today may i remind you that the, the mandate god has given to us is a mandate to bring revelation to people to cause individuals to live we have a call to bring life to people. What Jesus Christ brought is life. He didn't bring big cars. Arm robbers drive big cars. Cocaine peddlers. The greatest gift of God to the living soul he created was dominion. The greatest gift of God to the living soul. By the living soul here, I mean man and woman. The greatest gift, the first and the most important and the greatest gift that God gave to the living soul that he created according to the Bible was what? Dominion. What is dominion? Dominion is rulership. Dominion is rulership. Ruling over. Rule, dominion is being in charge, control, influence, power. Dominion is wealth, health, influence. Glory, honor, confidence, boldness. You don't see kings that are terrified. Kings are all the time together. Mohammed Buhari, the president of Nigeria, no matter what is happening, that man lives in confidence. He has the entire armed forces of Nigeria under his control. If he wants, he can change the service chiefs tomorrow in the morning and he will get new ones into it. He can take a major and make that person a major general overnight and break every protocol because he's a commander in chief. So he can change things to suit his confidence. I'm just trying to give you a peek into what dominion is. Dominion is control, being above. 
control you tread over things dominion is to have things under you that was the first and the most important gift that god gave to the living soul that he created by the way in his image and likeness now if you transpose that into what it means to be a child of god the greatest gift you have the greatest gift of god to you as a believer is dominion control you see jesus christ said in luke 10 19 i have given you authority to trample upon snakes to trample to have dominion to rule over to exercise influence and control to set limits for and to snakes and scorpion and to overcome all the powers of the enemies nothing shall harm you find out if that word is correct in your life many assignments 20 assignments in a day is not equal to dominion having assignment altars all over the city is not equal to dominion just God says, I've given you authority. I pray in the name of Jesus that as I speak, that every believer sitting down here, something of God will rise in your life. Amen. That's what the word of God does to a believer. It tells you you were made to rule over principalities and power, and you get ready, and you get angry, and you start to rule, and you now get angry. Why did I see bad dream yesterday and woke up panic? And you get and you go back to the dream and say, God, I wish I could back, go back to the dream. You know, the word of God charges and recharges and, and sets you dangerous. That's why you need the word of God. People, when they come to the place of the word of God, they become lifeless and hopeless, and they walk away disappointed. They don't see what they've wanted. Ask them to pray, they pray and sweat but the word of god prayer does not do much if you don't have the word and the word does not do, does not do anything to you if you don't have the seed of the word in you the greatest power i have discovered is the word i have exercised dominion there's power in announcement i want to challenge you as a mother in the house that you cannot live in in the environment wake up and make announcement I have ruled i have ruled by the word of god am i talking to somebody i have ruled by the word of god the greatest the greatest threat on earth is the word of god okay so we have talked about it let's look at this dominion genesis chapter 1 verse 28 god blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it that's dominion rule over the fish of the sea <laughs> rule over the birds of the air and rule over every living creature that moves on the ground three levels of rulership air land and sea so you are a seal <laughs> air land and sea the seal commander you have authority over the marine you have authority over the aerial stuffs things that fly the scripture says the way the arrows that fly by night that's that's what you've been given is a gift you don't fast for it to be given to you you don't fast into dominion you receive it people have fasted and died without dominion those early days of being a child of god when people talk about spiritual dominion i can't remember what people used to talk about but i've come to know the dominion is is god in you simple <laughs> if i don't say any other thing i've said everything dominion is what god in you look at genesis chapter 2 verse 19 now the lord god has formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the beds of the air he brought them to the man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each creature that was his name that's dominion dominion names things a king names a street udom has power to rename the airport 
he may not use it but he has the power he can wake up tomorrow and say this airport has been renamed he can rename the stadium so when you name your children Atom, Afion, you are showing dominion a king names thing he names he can name a city he named this city Uyo is no longer Uyo in the, in the ancient when kings monarchs when we're talking about kingship here we are not talking about democracy in a, in a sense of all the endless complication of sitting down to argue and all this in a true dominion sense you don't once you have obeyed god you you refer to nothing you say uyo you are no longer uyo uyo you are uyai and it is proclaimed from today uyo is no longer uyo uyo is uyai and so when somebody calls uyo say shut up you are outdated he said what is it i've not been in town say uyai say uyai yes so you can name fever into something dominion means you have authority and power that what the doctor calls cancer you can name it in fact and god said what the scripture said whatever adam named it that is what it was which means god waits for a king that's why the devil loves to take over the place because kings are to make things happen i'm sharing revelation is coming just give a little bit of time the scripture said whatever name adam gave to things god did what approved by that god was telling adam now you are the commander on earth on my behalf why because you are image and likeness of who of me which means god says as i rule in heaven over all things you rule here that's the desire of god that's the desire of god so to be a child of god is to to be a ruler on behalf of god in spheres you are a ruler of God, on behalf of God in your family as a child of God. I take rulership seriously. I woke up this morning, I exercise rulership over my family line. That's what I do every morning. That's what I do every time. Things are harassing and all that. I know I'm responsible. I don't complain. I go to work. I go to work and stand in the presence of God and rule over things dominion by the power of the word glory to god shout hallelujah. hallelujah so you have seen dominion and dominion is dominion springs from god because god is dominion god is the king so it is only the one who represents god who is the king that's why the first thing god created man in his image and likeness it means he deputizes himself in man or through man makes man to be like him in order to rule like him god approves that you rule it is the it is the plan of god that you rule you rule over things just guys spoke to the disciples in the gospel ministry he said i've given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions because standing like i stand if you if you don't stand well arrows will kill you sometimes you are standing as a minister you are standing arrows will come physically you can feel them so if you don't have dominion on top of them you can finish one ministry and go and have a tuberculosis and die and get crippled there are ministers that don't enjoy good health because of hazard ministry hazard am i talking to somebody you see some people maybe you ministers wives or those who work with ministers or who are into ministry without having clear understanding when they go through a serious spiritual operation maybe deliverance or whatever they suffer it for a long time 
Some people don't ever get out of it. Because of the arrows that come, it means they don't enjoy dominion. Because dominion doesn't mean that things are not coming against you. It means things come, but they are under you. You rule over them. Am I talking to somebody? That's the gift of God. So dominion comes from God. And it is only when you are in God, representing God, that you can exercise dominion. Dominion is not fasting, I have to tell you. You can fast and become dry bones and walk around. If you are not in God, representing God, you don't have dominion. Because dominion is God. Dominion comes from God. The scripture says God is king. In majesty and roped. He sits above all. Alright. So we have established that. Let's move forward. Forward. Apart from God, everything that came into the jurisdiction of man was under dominion or the government and control of man. This point is this. Apart from God himself, who made man in his image and likeness, every other thing in, on the earth, air, land and sea, was under man. Man was made to rule here. The heavens is own, but the earth he has given to men. Spirits don't have rights on earth. That's why an angel can move around. If an angel is not instructed by, instructed by God, he cannot do anything on earth. Angels are, are servants, ministers. They don't have authority of their own. They enjoy delegated authority. That's why as a child of God, if you don't stand right with God, the angel that was supposed to help you can watch and see you dying and cannot help you. Because it does not help. Angels don't do things anyhow. They are sent on mission. And they do what they are asked to do. So, demons then are strangers on the earth. When, demon, when the angels, some angels were dislodged from the heavens and they fell, they came in here. They are strangers, they are aliens. They don't have authority to enjoy, to operate here because this is the realm of man. To operate here, they need a man. They need the consent of a man, the collaboration of a man, the cooperation of a man. The principle of witchcraft, how witchcraft is destroying families is that they first of all get a member of the family to have access to a family. That's why a lot of children are being initiated almost every day. In everywhere, everywhere, schools, churches, in places, initiation. That's why we need to build a church community that is firebrand, a place that is pregnant, you know, pregnant with fire, that is impregnable, that the adversary comes, it cannot operate. You know, there are churches are places where Satan is working very well because when people say church, they just think it's church is okay, God is in control. When God is not honored and the character of God is not revealed, Satan uses it. That's why a lot of a lot of souls are under demonic manipulation in church. You don't understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> so let's leave that one now. So, demons, spirit, they need permission. They need access. That is how you can understand that Genesis chapter 3, talking about the serpent, the serpent didn't go to harass Eve. He had no such permission to harass. Why? Because the evil one was talking to the commander, the ruler of the sphere. So, he could only make suggestions. So, the devil rules through deception. It turns black. It makes black look like white. So that you can take it and eat and die. God forbid. 
so if you look at genesis chapter 3 did god really say so it's a kind of friendly conversation because he knows he does not have authority to say i strip you what the devil was aiming at god said i should tell you please look at me what the devil was looking for he was not a car the devil was not looking for food the devil was not looking for anything he was looking for the greatest gift that god gave to man dominion because because of that dominion the devil was under man so he just said how do i come and steal his power in order to rule over him when white people came to africa do you know what they did they first of all got the rulers chiefs gave them gin they drank and they started selling slaves they needed grounds there was a time slave trade became the most lucrative venture in africa if you if you have time visit cape coast in ghana if you have time go and visit the slave castle go and and visit the slave castle where the slaves were kept in waiting to be shipped out of africa and you will get angry I was in that place and i came back praying through the night to ask god to take anger away from me one man did to men our brothers and sisters sold out as goods how's that goods it came to a point that a brother like what is happening now kidnapping that a brother will look for a way of selling the brother a friend would have look for a way of selling the friend when a son does not please the father the father will sell him out sell daughters out so the white people first of all came they didn't come to capture africa no they went to the rulers made it a beautiful thing to them gave them gin and they drank a superior gin and they get more intoxicated and more foolish gave them beautiful hearts that they have never had gave them a shot my, mother, my father used to call shed or shot give them a shot give them beautiful things and looking at these beautiful things the king said ah they now started selling their children selling those they should protect that is the same thing that the devil went and did to Eve because Eve and Adam they were the rulers those in, with dominion nobody could dare nobody they were in charge God gave them control in all things they did God really and the devil knew the only way that Adam and Eve were rulers because they were representing God so the only way to deprive them of rulership turn them against God when you turn them against God they lose connection with God and they lose divinity and they lose dominion and then they can become my slaves that is the tragedy of sin it's not about grace it's not about that jesus has died on the cross and his blood has been shed it's about the fact that sin takes your throne from you and makes you a slave in your kingdom from the old testament to the new testament the same revelation it was what is constantly under attack is dominion the devil that harasses a husband to abandon the wife and to chase other young women outside and to spend money on useless projects the devil want to deprive the man of the dominion over his family on the day he should stand in the gap for the wife not to die he will not be found and the, die, the wife goes the day should stand in the gap as a king and the prince of the family to decree over children nothing can touch my child you devil get out of my space he does not have authority he comes home guilty filthy ashamed confused he watches his generation destroyed because he does not represent god in his family if you understand me if you understand me let me see your hands praise god shout hallelujah you see the help the whole purpose of this by the time you are done you will know that by selling yourself to sin you have traded off your dominion and you have become a slave by your signature you have approved your slavery to be under the dominion of satan pastor or no pastor 
prophecy or no prophecy assignment or no assignment Mm. (laughs) I have said something that I I want to remind you The only way to get man out of dominion To get man out of the seat of the throne The only threat of man to the devil was dominion It was not the food The devil doesn't go after food That's why when preaching becomes food Who told you the devil is worried about food? You see, there is a deception. One of the part, one of the one of the series we have to teach believers in this place is the power of deception. There is a principle of deception working in Christianity. The principle of deception works through diversion, diverting attention to what is not important in order to miss what is important. The devil is not against it's not against food. Otherwise, arm robbers will not eat. Or whatever it is, those who don't know God, let's forget about them robbers. The devil is not against cars. The devil is not against this thing. The devil is against what will make car different for somebody. Dominion. That's what the devil is after. So when we now begin to look like the church is place where we talk all the time, receiving your big car, believing God for a new house, and all this. And the man is sitting down there He's sitting with the wife But he has other wives in that same church And they are praying Joining hands with the wife In the name of Jesus we believe God for a new house In the name of Jesus amen. New house to do what? Just can say these things are what the pagans are running after But as for you Run after life Run after dominion Just as a city for the kingdom Kingdom is dominion The rulership of God Because when you have the rulership of God over you You shall be a ruler over things Because in the beginning Because God ruled over Adam and Eve Adam and Eve ruled over the earth But when they walked away from God And rejected the rulership of God And the dominion of God They also Walked away from their rulership that's the secret. Now, just guys came to reverse it. And just guys, the high point of the teaching of just guys said, Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. And what? Righteousness. All these other things. In the beginning, they were given to Adam. Adam didn't need to create them. Adam was to name them, assign them values and position. But the gospel is being preached upside down. It now looks like the more of these things you have, the more blessed you are. It's a lie. Am I against this? No. They are additional to me. Watch me three, 10 years from now. Watch me 20 years from now. I will not leave the earth until I have become an empire. No, I'm not going anywhere. No, you don't need to clap for me. Pray for yourself. I already have an understanding. So don't clap for me because it doesn't look like. Is that important? That's not important. Is that not according to the word of God? God says, ask of me and I will give you nations. So I'm not saying anything extraordinary. I'm just saying the word of God. So if you are asking for a car, I'm not asking for a car. I'm asking for nations. See the difference. You are asking for a brand new Toyota. I'm asking for the whole of Japan. Where Toyota comes from? The man Toyota is from Japan. So I'm asking for Japan. They can give you cars, but I will own where car where Toyota was originated from. That's what that's my interest. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm not asking for a house. I'm asking for the whole of Europe. I'm asking for the whole of Australia. I'm asking for the whole of Asia. I'm asking for the whole of the Americas. I'm asking for the whole of Africa. I'm not asking for a connection with the governor. I'm asking for ownership of every soul in this aquarium state to unto my God. That's what I ask God for every day. Give every soul here to yourself through the administration of God says, and ask me and I will give you nation. That's dominion. That's the thinking of a king. A king does not think of food. Show me a king that thinks of food, then I will tell you he's not a king. Kings don't think of food. They are thinking about the affairs of control. Affairs of prolonging. Affairs of making things work. 
He's trying to find out what loophole can I close? What new road can I create? What new thing can I do that will change the game in my favor? He's not thinking about car. He's not thinking. That's our king. So change how you think. So when church and, and preaching now makes you feel, when you see a car, say, how? When shall? When shall what? Nonsense. <laughs> you are much more than that. Ask God for nations. Ask God for ability. Let me tell you, no matter how much you fast and pray for money, you will never have money until you have the capacity to make money. <laughs> Absolutely, I know it. So I cannot sit down in my church and be talking to people, money, 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 money. I teach you, I give you capacity by revelation. And when you have capacity, you discover money. And because you have capacity, money cannot rule over you. Those who are ruled by money are those without capacity, opportunists. They just, just stumble upon money. They get mad. But people who have capacity to make money, the money is under them. They are bigger than money. They don't die when they lose. And they don't kill themselves when they gain. They have dominion. Opportunists, when they make money, they die. When they lose money, they die. Those without capacity, but those with capacity, when they make money, they live. When they lose money, they live. First of all, because they have capacity. Shout hallelujah. So governors don't think about food. They think about rulership. So the whole issue of temptation was to rob man. Now look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17. Let's read this scripture. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat of it you will what surely die now something is happening here god gave the man order and let him know i gave you life and the only way to keep that life is to obey me <laughs> Because what God gave to man was life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. God molded of the dust of the earth a man. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? The breath of life. And man became what? A living soul. A living being. That's what God made. So it is only a living being that can rule. So God said, I made you alive to rule. But the only way to remain alive, because if you don't have life, you will not rule. Is that you have to do what? Obey me. When the scriptures talk about the tree of good and evil, I don't want to go into a theological analysis. There is just one thing that is at stake here. God is laying the principle of obedience. To enjoy my life, obey me. To enjoy my rulership, obey me. To enjoy me, obey me. <laughs> there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We don't sing that kind of song now. Now, a modern day kind of Christianity is the art and science of disobeying God and yet enjoying God. I'm sure you agree with me. <laughs> the way you keep quiet is like, yes, you are saying the truth. That's what we are trying to do. To preach, we preachers to sometimes try me to make you feel preach in such a way that it doesn't really touch sin, it doesn't really worry about sin. <laughs> you just live the good life, have faith, the power of laying claim to your blessing by faith. The man that is going to have faith is not even alive because he lives in disobedience, which means a lot of preaching is just nonsense, talking to dead wood that will never rise. First thing is life. It was a living soul that God says, rule. If you are not alive, you cannot rule. And the consequence of disobedience, God didn't say you will not have food to eat. He said you will die. <laughs> Praise God. Because if you are not alive, you cannot rule. So God said, obey me. Obedience. What is obedience? Alignment. Stay in alignment with me. 
stay in sync with me walk where i walk say what i say love what i love go where i go think what i think desire what i desire hate what i hate that's obedience obedience is making your will conformable with the will of god loving what he loves going where he goes surrendering obedience makes you that you don't have your own life you live the life of god you cannot be obedient until you are complete mumu mumu means all day usme e ka nene me afo yona e ka gbo nene afo na abasebo jom afo jom so my soul the verse my soul no question that's why abraham is called the father of faith our father in faith because he's the only mumu whom god will say so my soul they will so my soul bring your only son he will bring no question sarah is not a mother of faith because sarah knew something she knew enough to laugh see this like god is drunk because god says i will have i will give you a mother does he know that and she laughed abraham no foolish alignment and god says that alignment is your life and so when the devil came he said did god really say he's saying that doesn't really matter that you obey him why don't you start living your own life marry the way you want date the way you want he said these days you know fornication is very beautiful in expression i'm dating a guy there's one girl i'm dating i'm hoping i'll marry her that means i'm fornicating with somebody i'm sorry not all of but most sorry so it's not as if i don't understand english do i what is dating so we make it very beautiful you say my pastor knows about it yes <laughs> it means my pastor my pastor is a party to it why we, that's why we run to where there is no help looking for help people look run to those who don't even know what they need in life to look for solution because they have lost dominion the mandate of god is to bring back life and bring back dominion lift up the right hand and say i have dominion i live by dominion in the name of jesus christ okay so once the devil succeeded once the devil succeeded in getting them out of alignment and making them disobey god disobedience is fighting a son that disobeys the mother is fighting with the mother a daughter that disobeys the father is fighting with the father there is no way you can disobey your father and enjoy the fellowship of your father the father that embraces you hugs you and kisses you and pats you on the cheek after you have defiantly disobeyed him is a foolish father disobedience brings about bitterness the disobedience embitters embitters the one you disobey once you disobey your father you embitter your father and the result of it is that you will be bitter yourself because things will not go right with you you struggle for school fees things that you should do that's why a lot of young girls are prostitutes not nobody here a lot of young men are in cult because they don't want to stay in alignment no disobedience so everybody to his, to your tent oh israel obedience is coming back in the name of jesus the church will preach obedience will preach honor sometimes we talk about obedience only in terms of tithe that's why many people are reacting against tithe. can i tell you something all the apostles against tithe they are not preaching against tithe they are preaching against the greed about tithe because it comes to look like the only thing people talk about in terms of obedience you have to obey the lord if god has laid it in your heart that you should do this you should do so nobody talks about obeying the lord in the in the way you relate with the woman you, you want to marry obeying the lord in your relationship with your spouse 
obeying the Lord in honesty in business, obeying the Lord. Nobody talks about so most of the time is obeying the Lord in matters of tithe. So the whole movement against tithe arises from greed and wrong gospel. And one thing in life is that reaction does not give direction. Reaction most time is also a mistake. When somebody slaps you and you react, you are more likely to say nonsense. So at the end of it, you say, God, I'm sorry. I should not have said it. Because reaction most time leads to wrong direction. So when people are now teaching, tight is a sin. Nonsense. Non absolute nonsense. No matter who teaches it. Because it's not in the Bible. Nonsense. The whole thing is that there are people now talking about obedience is all about obedience in tithe, obedience in seed, obedience in offering. Obey me, obey me. Obedience that makes a man comfortable, but a, a, obedience that does not honor God. That makes a man comfortable in immorality, comfortable in foolishness, comfortable in irresponsibility, who does not exercise authority over his family. And does not exercise a kingly power over the children. He's not obedient in matters of discipline and responsibility. But as long as he's, he's obedient in matters of tithe. And making sure that you don't eat the tithe of God. That's what people are preaching against. So whoever you hear, say tell the person, I understand it. You understand it's nonsense. Because it's a reaction. Reaction doesn't do anything. Response is what does something. Praise God. See, what happened is that once they disobeyed God, something happened. What happened? Look at that Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed thick leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the night. I mean the cool of the day. And the, they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden <laughs> do you see what is there implication number one as soon as they disobeyed they discover shame say shame, shame. the second thing nakedness say nakedness shame. the other thing poverty say poverty the other one fear and defeat say fear and defeat shame. this is what rebellion against God brings about shame nakedness poverty fear and defeat and all of these are the opposite of dominion let's go back to the governor or the president the pre president has enough even when he makes mistake people go ahead to see how to polish his mistake and turn his nonsense into sense the president have you ever found out whether he, he wears the same garment in twice or three times he has honor even sometimes when he may not be honorable people still honor him as long as you are the president so dominion is glory dominion is wealth dominion is power dominion is confidence strength the opposite of dominion is shame the opposite of dominion is nakedness. The opposite of dominion is poverty. The opposite of dominion is fear and defeat. If you are a fearful person, one thing you know is that you are not living in dominion. Living in shame. Living in a condition that you are not proud of. Now, the worst thing that has happened to our generation, our generation is becoming depraved. Depravity is a condition of sen not being sensitive. Now when people are proud, they say I'm a proud lesbian. A proud gay. Transgender. It's depravity. It means humanity has died in them. Things that should be a result of shame now becomes pride. Go and read Romans chapter 1 and 2 and 3. You will see these things. That's the work of the devil. So this is what Adam and Eve saw. By seeing shame, it means 
glory had left by saying nakedness it means honor had left by saying poverty it means cavote wealth prosperity had left by saying fear they were afraid of god it means strength power confidence boldness had gone by saying defeat it means victory had gone it means dominion had gone you cannot exercise dominion when you are afraid fear is the opposite of dominion poverty is the opposite of dominion and when dominion has been lost then they fear when the dominion where king when kingship has been lost then the place where the king was ruling he can no longer rule there he can no longer stay there am i talking to somebody once you finish with dominion you lose your sphere of rulership so adam could no longer stay in the garden because he was no longer the king that's what sin does sin deprives you of rulership in your sphere a lot of people the wealth the blessing the glory everything god kept for them in their garden they cannot have access to why because they are not a king it takes a king to sit on the throne if you are not a king and you are around the throne that means you are a, a sweeper you sweep you clean you are a servant no longer the king look at genesis chapter 3 the natural consequence of losing dominion through sin and i want to announce to you that sin is the only way by which man loses dominion because dominion is god character in man and when you lose god character through sinfulness and rebellion from that moment you lose dominion it means the things that were afraid of you they are no longer afraid of you which is why the devil is not afraid of deliverance ministry people come for deliverance they are free from marine spirits they go and in a dream they see in a vision i cut that demon into pieces wake up and the devil keeps quiet until you go back to fornication and the demon begins to come wah, 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 wah. You was like jesus at that time you forget forget all the scriptures you go to the bible you open everything is blank your spirit is blank presence has left you and then you go back to square two and you begin to look for a pastor you see after one week i was not seeing those things again can you imagine the thing has come back who brought it back so the devil is not worried about them he's not worried about deliverance ministry am i talking to somebody the devil is not worried about deliverance ministry. the devil is worried about what ministry revelation ministry because it takes revelation of the word for a man to maintain deliverance without the understanding of the word as revelation you will keep and you know unendingly going through deliverance and you are never delivered because one day you rule in the evening by morning you wake up and the devil comes in different ways your thoughts your bitterness your lack of forgiving somebody your arrogance your pride all those things they open the door because they are the character of the devil when you hate the scripture says you are a murderer and you give openness to the devil to come and hug you and befriend you and you wake up ah, man of god and sometimes you change fanado come on more reading again he said there's another man in town let's go and they tell you bring this bring this bring this sometimes you go there they ordain you immediately Ooh, they just ordain you straight so the only way to get this deliverance done become a deacon i said ah, ah, there's no problem what do you want so garment do this do this fine eh -eh. hey hey deacon is this with demons Now, how does all this con concern the ancestral issue? This is what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> now you understand me. Do you understand me? Yes. yes. How does it connect? Just one point. The goal of the devil 
is to keep the man that was to be in rulership and dominion to keep him under and how does he do it through sin and he makes sure that this sin does not have closure closure means i repent i break from it i don't do it again i don't associate with it again it means i have broken from it i'm a new man the devil doesn't have problem it makes sure that sin has become a culture because it is only through sin the devil rules whereas man rules through righteousness in god the devil rules over man through sinfulness and rebellion so the devil makes you offend god and he, he sits on top of you when the scripture says righteousness exalts a nation is not only righteousness it's not only a nation that righteousness exalts righteousness exalts anything anywhere anyone that comes under righteousness because righteousness is god himself is the standard of god is the rulership of god the scripture says god has made righteousness the foundation so righteousness and justice are the foundation of what of his throne which means rulership the foundation of rulership the foundation of dominion is what righteousness and justice and the scripture says righteousness joy and peace and joy in the holy ghost these are for the kingdom of god this is the kingdom of god righteousness and the foundation is zedek righteousness melke king the king of righteousness is also the king of salem it means when you are in righteousness you will be the king of peace and you will have peace with god that's how god taught me about priesthood so when people say he has walked away from priesthood as he has removed the sultan so he, all the anointing has left him let them wait <laughs> who told you who told you anointing is in sultan otherwise everybody who wears sultan will be anointed it's a lie so the whole issue is that the devil uses sin rebel against god and like Adam and Eve, don't repent, don't bring closure, which means it now becomes a tradition. Your son inherits you because the father, the son, the daughter must take over. Is it not true? Whether good or bad must take over. And then the daughter comes in. For example, the parents didn't like to have peace in marriage. They, they worked against everything and all that and all that. Then the daughter comes, beautiful girl the devil doesn't have any problem he comes to instigate you with the same tendency of your father and your mother because the scripture says there is the law of sin and death without sin there is no death so there must be a provocation if the, the if the marriage of your parents died as a result of pride then the daughter is already positioned there may be a tendency for that arrogance and pride to come up and once it is triggered it means the law of sin has been obeyed then death is about coming that is how ancestral pattern is perpetuated am i talking to somebody there is no magic it is sin go into families where people hate themselves and go and look at two three four brothers if you see them they are uncles they don't come to their house and before you know it even siblings they are not greeting themselves it means what started with the uncle has not died though it has been transferred the day you will change that pattern is the day of doing what going back to dominion how do you go back to dominion to god likeness god likeness the character of god obedience now you begin to live like god because the first man had dominion because he lived like god when you live like god it means you are not the representative of your father you are the representative of god and because you are the representative of god things are under you it means the things that brought your parents down they are under you if you understand me shout hallelujah <laughs> now when they talk about breaking ancestral curse there is no way an ancestral curse will be broken in a family of immorality and carelessness and waywardness where young women love to go and stay with men and just have children anyhow and you say i break ancestral curse and a woman is going about in immorality in the tendency of cheap life is a lie the first thing is do is a is a reconfiguration that is why the scripture says, if a mini man be in christ jesus he is what a new what creation now a new creation lives a new life a new creation is not church 
It's not the church you belong to. It's a new life that you live. Because you live in a new life, the scripture says, for there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who do not live according to the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life has set them free from the law of what? Sin and death. It means the same tendency that brought destruction to the family. That tendency comes unto them. They rule over it. They refuse to be unforgiving like the parents. They refuse to be arrogant. They refuse to be bitter. They refuse to be to be lustful. They refuse to be immoral. They choose to live right. To choose, they choose to live pure. Therefore, the law of the spirit of life has set them free from the law of the sin and death. It means they cannot die. Their marriage cannot die like that of the parents. Their, their businesses cannot die like that of the parents. That means to change ancestral pattern. You change your life pattern. If you have gotten that revelation, you are free. That's a secret. The devil doesn't go to sleep. He keeps coming to make sure that that same old wound. Ah, you know they tell me the devil has perseverance the devil has patience when he doesn't come to you when you are young when you are comfortable and complacent he shows up in another way to instigate the law of sin and death because when you sin you will die and once you die you leave dominion now he rules over you and he intends to rule over your son he rules over over generation his interest is not just to rule over the father is to rule over the children until christ comes why because the greatest gift god gave to man on earth was dominion and the greatest target of the devil on earth is dominion and dominion is true losing dominion is through the law of sin and death for when you sin you will die ruling in dominion is the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus that has set you free from the law of sin and death it means righteousness it means peace it means joy in the holy ghost it means seeking the kingdom first and its righteousness and all other things shall be given unto you it means loving what god loves it means living the new life the last thing is this when you accept jesus christ as lord and savior in spirit and in truth the seed of the new life is in you the scripture says no one can see the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god until he's born again he's born of water and the spirit when you are born of water and spirit what happens is that you have the new life as a seed like a child that is born you need to grow dominion is not instantaneous dominion is progressive a child of five years is not as powerful as a, a man of 50 years the difference between the two is knowledge experience growth this is why you see in church people don't like teaching ministry people are interested in deliverance ministry why disobedience deliverance ministry responds to the place of disobedience where people break covenant with god and they are constantly afflicted with demons so they look for who will deliver them but the teaching ministry harasses pattern is telling you change you ought to be better and people don't like it because they choose darkness so the people don't like but let me tell you a generation cannot be different from the past generation except by the world knowing what the past did not know and living what they did not live you cannot live a new life and know the news the new kingdom of god and then have the same consequence of your father so this generation is the hope of the past am i hearing you and the hope of the past is not in prayer the hope of the past is in revelation is in living the life of god i give you an assignment read colossians chapter 3. just go down and read colossians chapter 3 and read it down you will discover one thing one of the things you will discover is what growing in knowledge of truth the renewing of the person the growth of the person because dominion is god likeness so the more you grow in your god likeness that's the character of god in you in purity in holiness in humility in honesty in simplicity in the cleanness of heart loving like god does and this does not happen instantly the new man in you is capable of doing this but the new man in you has to grow into doing this 
which means you have to nurture yourself in the word it's not just the word of the pastor in church you have to befriend the bible you have to pray you have to pray and read the bible until you have read the lesson of the bible so that when you read a scripture it sticks in your mind so that when temptation comes you take from the word you live not like your father but you live like the word the word says forgive as god has forgiven you and in a family that people don't forgive your brothers will begin to provoke you and you are no longer living like the ancestors who will fight themselves you know, that's what their fathers used to do and they have taken over now somebody has been has to be new the day of adversity somebody wants to fight it takes two to tango it takes two to fight when the other one is a new person and you want to fight he said no i don't fight you because i love you you are my brother he said shut up he said i'm sorry i know that it is very difficult to but by that you have gotten dominion because the first level of dominion is dominion over lust dominion over anger dominion over bitterness you cannot talk about dominion over witches and wizards if you don't have dominion over immorality we don't have dominion over the character of satan the nature of the old man that manifests in the corruption that the scripture talks about as the work of flesh if you have dominion over lust if you have domi dominion over anger over pride have over arrogance and dishonesty the devil will come looking like just said the prince of this world has sought has sought everywhere but has not found anything to hold on to in me that is the newness that is dominion that is the beginning of change in ancestral line and when your children grow up they are no longer seeing what you saw in your parents they are seeing a new thing because you always teach what you have and who you are so you are teaching them who you are in christ and the scripture can say that faith that was in your grandfather i mean your grandmother is now is in your mother is now in you like paul was talking about timothy that's how to change ancestral pattern <laughs>